West Papua is the western half of the island of New Guinea. It lies just 250 kilometers north of Australia and is the second largest island in the world. Most of the interior highlands are mountainous and covered with primary rainforest. Whilst the habitats of the coastal lowlands are made up of mangrove swamps, sago palms and lowland forests. With over 250 distinct dialects, the vast majority of native Papuans still live a largely traditional lifestyle using subsistence agriculture. The traditional diet of the Highland Papuans mainly consists of tubers, in particular sweet potatoes, including the green leaves. With the domesticated pigs forming an important part of both diet, economy and culture, food is still cooked in a century-old way using a ground oven, just as can be found throughout Melanesia. The coastal dwelling platforms naturally eat more fish and sago. Due to the remoteness of New Guinea and the impenetrability of much of the interior, large areas of both West Papua and Papua New Guinea remained unknown to the outside world until the second half of the 20th century. But such a resource-rich wilderness could not escape the greed of colonial and corporate powers for very long. First to arrive, uninvited, were the Christian missionaries, whose activities remained coastal for the first few decades. With the advent of aviation, they soon had their own airline and formerly uncontacted peoples were having runways cut into their homelands, opening up the interior to all comers. Coerced by the missionaries and persuaded by the cargo and goods, the Papuans diluted their own beliefs in return for a secure afterlife. Nowadays, most indoctrinated Papuans would, if asked, say they were Christian believing whilst retaining some of their traditional knowledge. Just as soon as Indonesia got its hands on West Papua from the former colonial power, the Netherlands, it started a massive transmigration program. To date, approaching one million, mostly Sumatran and Javanese peasants, have been transplanted into West Papua. Many were just left to fend for themselves in the newly fabricated transmigration zones and economic centres like the towns of Jaipura and Timika. In order to support its colonisation of Papua, the government of Indonesia, backed by other greedy states, sent in vast amounts of military hardware and personnel. A regime notorious for its out-and-out -out brutality. The reported numbers of Papuans that have been killed or disappeared thus far is over 150,000. In order for Indonesian's Western partners to be able to extract the vast and highly profitable natural resources untroubled by the locals, a partnership with the military was embarked upon. 
This is most clearly seen at the giant Freeport copper and gold mine where the Indonesian military were used to remove the indigenous population from their ancestral homeland and are now paid guards at the US and UK run operation which makes over one million dollars a day profit. But how did this land and its people fall under the control of Indonesia and Western corporate interests? <laughs> the answer lies with Indonesia and American greed and one of the most disgraceful betrayals by the UN ever. In the 60s, the Dutch were preparing to leave West Papua and the Indonesian military invaded. Indonesia claimed that West Papua was hers, but the Dutch had already promised the Papuans their independence. The US intermediated and brokered a deal where the Indonesians would conduct a referendum in West Papua. Then under the eyes of the UN, Indonesia flouted the rules and rounded up just over a thousand Papuans of the one million plus population. Papa was one of those selected. Pertama, kecamatan Pohon Dini Lohonet dirapi dari kelam Pohon Dini gembala no kepala suku no pembukar kelak buka penyanduk lapangan kelak buka buka penyanduk baris yang buka buka pinang kono gari ante panah hidup me tupu apa ninggal me lengkap penuh Indonesia merdeka lagi no terpinang kono. Bebas pinagunde, Papua lagi no bebas pinagun lagi. Ni orang lelaki nanti mendapat tetap di mana orang orang nunggu pinangkuat lah. Pagan ni kan ni kan satu bulan. Abu satu bulan bulan Julio bukan punya bulan Agustus hari nak kerja tiba. Oh, memang naya bukau memang bina orang kari. Oh, kita tentara kelihatan polis orang terkelihatan tu pun orang bukan buat ni kelili nak orang kah. Mena komandan abang kita nak kerja ni nak makan kerja. Kita mena. Tapi ini. Ira tuan orang nanti hati anda agak ada men Indonesia dan orang men dah nyampe lawan hey tolong tolong tio yang ada kerja pas tolong 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 orang ni dah wenai lagi rumah aku eh di ni wenai juru bahasa kalau nanti wenai lagi rumah lah juru bahasa nanti di nampu ni gue anak sekolah aku ada yang wenai lagi rumah ni bahasa macam ni kalau kamera ti ni nampu apa wenai lagi rumah aku eh di nampu ni nampu juru bahasa ni kena kalau wenai lagi rumah nanti perpelan orang ada bantuan kerja. Jauh tiap orang ini kita ni terkolang baik kalau kita wajib guna nombor macam apa ni orang ramai terkolang gua keluar ni dah nampak orang terkolang kalau kita mesti Indonesia ni nombor lagu bakti tiap orang Indonesia ni lagu bakti kalau ni 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 kita wajib bakti ni lebih kuat ni dah ramai orang terkolang orang berlek walau kalau orang dah bukati gubernur ni dah mulim dulu kalau orang berlek lagu lek kalau mesti ni dah orang terkolang kalau mesti ni nali Indonesia ni lagu bakti lagu tiap orang this story was the same all across West Papua and despite massive protests reported by the UN Inspectorate the United Nations then ratified the result that the Papuans had unanimously voted for Indonesian integration and West Papua fell under the control of the Indonesian military machine. And the brutality and oppression has continued, unabated, ever since. Each and every Papuan has their own horror stories and records of their recent bloody history. Benny Wenda, a leader of his people, 
recounts here the events of 1977. Same time, army, they bring an uh, Iceland. Like, uh, Iceland, like, they shoot my people by Iceland. Helicopter and then uh, Iceland, like, jet. Jet? I think same jet. So sometimes the army go and then they just still live and then throwing in the whole dig and then put in just still live and sometimes they cut it and sometimes and uh, close uh, uh, open and then uh, they fight and they sometimes they um, bring bring them and cut it her what about the missionaries? Did they help the people? So that time missionaries had already gone. Already gone. In response to this, the Papuans formed the Free West Papuan Movement, the OPM. Matthias Vender, the OPM's high commander, living in exile in Papua New Guinea, explains. Okay. I to say Mojelaka Nundu. Sebagai pengkhianat bangsa itu, itu termasuk sebagai pengkhianat bangsa sudah kerjasama dengan Indonesia itu saya akan jelaskan bahwa Indonesia kan negara sudah uh, uh, terpimpin militer dan dia datang sudah tanam sebagai jadi tanam akar, sudah jadi tanam akar dari tanah Papua di tanah Papua dia sudah tanam dia jadi akar akhirnya Dia se negara terpimpin militer. Akhirnya dia ah, terhadap bangsa Papua itu segala sesuatu maupun pembangunan maupun segala sesuatu dia mau bertelak atau dia mau kerja atau dia mau ngambil hasil itu. Itu dia tindakan dengan alas negara senyata. Alas negara senyata. Dan senyata itu dia beli itu senyata dari hasil Papua. Hanya em, melalui emas dan minak dengan hasil Papua itu dia beli senjata di Amerika atau di Inggris atau di mana-mana dia senjata model senjata datang terus dengan senjata itu dengan tindakan siapa mau berpicah dari Republik Indonesia dia mau keluar dari negara ini dia ada sedikit menuntut hak kebebasan untuk dia sedikit itu langsung dalam eh. Indonesia dia tindakan dari secara militer tindakan eh. mau ambil orang punya hak untuk tanah hak milik tanah untuk pribadi Nah, khusus tanah khusus itu tanah Papua tapi khusus itu dia pribadi buaya kah apakah dia bikin itu dia bilang eh baru dia tidak bisa untuk diampung-ampung ditempak dibunuh Mio, Bapak Yoan Over the years the Papuans have kept documentary lists of all the Papuans murdered or disappeared. So this one is the last one that's uh, in Wamena, uh, action in Wamena, 2000, uh, last year, 6 October. And uh, people, my people, they die, Elias Alua. And number two is August Murib, Hermes Tabuni, Robi Hesegem, Martinus Wetipo, Lewi Hiselo. This name of people. Pembangunan, uh, ambil di tembaga, ambil hasil uh, emas, Dan semua Indonesia diambil itu kami tidak mau karena Indonesia dia membunuh jiwa raga rakyat itu sudah genap 38 tahun hampir atau sudah 40 tahun sudah cukup untuk Indonesia dimusnahkan jiwa raga itu itu bukan sedikit berapa juta sekarang itu sudah termasuk 200 ribu eh? 200 ribu 200 ribu Jiwa. jiwa dan sudah Indonesia sudah korbankan apalagi minat tanahnya hmm. emasnya ah, buayanya ah, kayu-kayunya ah, kayu nggak harunya ah, semua hasil Papua itu Indonesia sudah makan 
sudah cukup untuk dia korbankan untuk bangsa Papua Barat. All of this killing is about control and exploitation of Papua's wealth of natural resources. The knock-on effect on the environment and people is nothing short of devastating. As the tailing polluted river downstream of the giant Freeport copper and gold mine clearly shows. Kedua, ah, saya sambung lagi bahwa ah, Amerika, ah, Inggris, ah, Indonesia datang ambil emas. Itu saya harap ah, saya tuan tanah, saya ala beri tanah bangsa Papua ini dari Sorong sampai Samra itu, saya punya hak saya akan berbicara. The multinational mining and energy corporations, blinded by their greed, refuse to acknowledge their contribution to the Papuan genocide. Operating with full military support, often at a price, and without the prior informed consent of the Papuan people, are Rio Tinto Zinc, Freeport McMoran, British Petroleum and Conico. In addition are the many expatriate logging companies known to be working closely with the out-of-control Indonesian military who own most of the logging concessions. These are primarily from Korea, Thailand and the Philippines. Witness to all this natural resource robbery and gross human rights violations have been the many factions of Christian missions. Even before Indonesia had annexed West Papua in 1969, Christian missionaries were acting as the spearhead of population, pacification and cultural erosion of the formerly free-living and independent tribal groups found throughout the island of Papua. Their complicit behaviour raises many questions. Even today, the missionaries are the first into an uncontacted tribe. Nowadays, the Papuans are as united as ever behind their universal desire for freedom from Indonesian oppression, Papua Madeka. Right across Papua, the various OPM groups openly object and show their defiance to Indonesian rule. Previously, the OPM have taken hostages and attacked the Freeport mine in a desperate bid to have their issue raised internationally. In December 2000, near the highland town of Ilaga, one OPM commander, Titus Murib, held a defiant flag raising and political rally for his people. Being denied a political voice in Indonesia, their only hope is with the outside world. <laughs> Indonesia segera mengembalikan hak kedaulat, kedaulatan bangsa Papua Barat yang pernah ada tanggal 1 Desember tahun 1961. Kedua, bahwa PBB atau Belanggaris Miring Belanda dan Indonesia segera bertanggung jawab atas pelanggaran hak dan kebebasan bangsa Papua Barat pada pen 
penentuan pendapat PPRA tahun 1969. Tiga, pemerintah Indonesia segera dihentikan praktik op politik. Ya, eh, ulangi praktik politik genasai atau pemusnahan Papua Nis Mal atau Malaysia 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 Soit dan nomor lima kami meminta pada pihak perusahaan Freeport Indonesia komponi harus dihentikan karena merupakan proyek politik Indonesia dan Amerika keenam kami minta pihak yang paling bertanggung jawab yakni Amerika Belanda, PBB dan Indonesia segera mengadakan dialog internasional di diharapkan di harapan rakyat Papua Barat Born out of a grand assembly of tribal elders in February 2000, the Presidium Council has a parliamentary structure with a panel of representatives from all regions and originally two elders, one from the highlands, Tom Bernal, and one from the lowlands, Thais Eloi. In May 2000, with funding from the more moderate Wahid government, the Presidium Council organised a conference. For the first time ever, people from all over West Papua came together to tell their stories and voice their desires. It culminated in a unanimous declaration of independence and their refusal to recognise the 1969 Act of Free Choice. Thais Eloise then stood up and appointed himself as singular leader of the Presidium and Tom Bernal as his deputy. Thais travelled to the Pacific Island Forum and to the US, but as the hardline military forces gained power in Indonesia, he was arrested with four other members of the Presidium. He was later let out on house arrest, where he continued to be a voice for the independence movement. He challenged his arrest and refused to sign the Special Autonomy Bill. He also publicly paid tribute to the OPM. Tais had become a real threat to Indonesia and on the 10th of November 2001, Indonesian Special Forces assassinated him. A day later, his wife told what happened. Hari hari Jumat Bapak dapat telepon dari Komandan Kopassus, Komandan Kopassus Tribuana ya. Iya. Jadi diundang untuk makan bersama hari Sabtu. Tapi Bapak malam Minggu ya. Iya, tapi Bapak diminta Bapak Kemarin itu ketemu Bapak jam 8 pagi di rumah Bapak. Iya. 
uh, bapa jam 8 tunggu tunggu, kemana dia tidak datang jam 11, tengah 11 kemana dia datang? Ketemu dengan bapa, saya tu undang bapa untuk malam hari ya, hari Sabtu malam untuk untuk acara makan. jam 10 kurang 10 menit bapak telepon bapak sudah selesai acara hmm. bapak mau pulang saya bilang oke okay. kemudian jam 10 lewat 10 atau 15 menit sopir telepon bahwa bapak di dengan sopir dihadang dengan mobil uh, bapak mau diculik hmm. bapak dan sopir diculik uh, sopir bilang mama bapak sudah dibawa lari hmm. uh, mama saya selamat Mama tolong berdoa Bapak dengan saya sekarang diculik Itu saja ucapan yang terakhir dari sopir The initial reaction from the Papuans was to burn many of the shops and hotels owned by the army But this rage soon turned to an outpouring of grief Thousands of people marched through the streets to his funeral. Mendesak pihak kepolisian Republik Indonesia untuk melakukan penyelidikan, penyidikan dan penuntutan secara tuntas terhadap pelaku-pelaku tersebut. There has still not been a proper investigation into his death, which is being blamed on insignificant Kapasa soldiers, whilst leaked documents reveal that his assassination was ordered at the highest levels of government.
with power becoming more concentrated in the Presidium, sections of the population got together to make their voices louder. They include students and women's organisations and an organisation called Demuk, the Penis Gourds People's Assembly Council, which represents the voices of mostly Highland people and works to keep their traditional culture strong. Benny Wender is the chair of Demuk. My name is Benny Wenda and I am a uh, leader for the Pinishgar People, uh, Pinishgar People Assembly Council. I move uh, with a refugee because uh, I'm leader for Demak. Maybe we call it Indonesia uh, Dewan Musyawara Masakat Koteka. Okay, and then English we say. Uh, the Penis Gar People Council Assembly. Demax, uh, it's a uh, new grow uh, two year, uh, last year, uh, two years ago, and this uh, one organization from islands people, and now uh, island people, special island, but uh, Demax means, um, Demax we call a tradition, okay? They mark the all Highland and Highland stripe. We use a tradition dress, and uh, we call uh, koteka. This just symbol, symbol, symbol from West Papua dress. And Indonesia make uh, all change our tradition change. That time, uh, my people all killed. My father and my mother, my family, uh, killed by Indonesia. And then, uh, organization like Demak, we have no from island people. They have no, and not many uh, organi uh, organi organize people from islands. And our people still poor and still under by other people. And then now, we see my people die, die, die until 1977, until now, and then we build a, a, a demak, and then now we handle all organization, uh, oh no organization, but all island people, highlands people. Okay, we bring them and we teach them, and uh, how development, political development, and TPA and OPM, and then we teach them and we learn together. And people, all people like and independent people uh, from Biak, Serui, and Sorong, Fakfak, Manokwari, Tamika, uh, Punjak Jaya, or uh, Wamena, or, and then uh, Merauke, Jaipura. They hope uh, uh, first December they can get independent. But no, I move here because um, spy or police they looking for me, and then I run away and I base in here. Army looking for me because I'm leader for Demak. So Demak is one things Demak build only independent. Demak don't like autonomy except for everything, but we need. Independent, just independent. Demak work closely with AMP, the Alliance of Papuan Students who have bravely demonstrated in the main towns of West Papua and across Indonesia. All political activists are highly oppressed. In December 2000, 50 Highland students were brutally tortured and three killed by police in a random act of extreme aggression. The leader of the AMP has also had his fingers cut off as a warning. Fearing similar treatment, many students and members of Demak, including Benny Wender, escaped to Papua New Guinea, where they set up a refugee camp.
Although safe from Indonesia, they have not been granted refugee status and could be forced to return to their deaths at any time. In June 2002, Benny Wender ventured back into West Papua to communicate with other members of Demark. He was arrested and has been kept in poor conditions on a false charge until now.